to you all to our chamber um, session with Tim Sarko, who is our census guru, who's going to tell us all about how to use data um, to, to help make with some business decisions and and um, really just I'm excited about learning about the um, the census business builder. So this is exciting. And I'm, I was telling my team here that this is a great opportunity for us to learn some new ways to maybe recruit some new businesses and, and to join the chamber as well. So I'm excited to um, have everybody here and hear from Tim. Um, and just very quickly, I'll give you a little bit about his bio. Um, he has been with the Census Bureau for 25 years and is currently a data dissemination specialist. He um, has lived and work, lives and works in the Cleveland area, um, but covers all of Ohio um, and started um, with the census a long, we're just going to say a long time ago, Tim, 25 years is a long time, um, and, but grew up in the Cleveland area and also attended the Ohio State University. So Tim, we're going to turn it over to you and let you take it away. And I did make you co-host. So if you need to share your screen and all of that, you should be good to go. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, hopefully you all, everybody could see that. Yes, we are good. Okay, good. Let me just move some stuff. Okay. Um, today I'm going to talk about census data for small business. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate our, our census business builder. But before I do that, I wanted you guys to know, you know, what exactly you're going to be looking at. There's all kinds of data and it's constantly being updated, um, the census business builder. And so the main data I have here, there's others, but um, these are the four main types of data that you'll see in the census business builder. Um, when I actually go into it. So I want to give you a background on that. And then uh, I'll show you a NAICS search. Um, this shows you the survival rate of businesses basically by year started and the number of years since starting. Basically what this is showing you is all these different businesses, regardless of year started, you can see right around year five, that there are roughly just over 50% survival, you know, surviving. And it gets, it gets even worse out to um, year seven and you can see year eight. And this is the top seven reasons that startups fail. Um, people start their business for the wrong reasons. Um, they think they're just gonna to make a, a ton of money um, very easily. And they have poor management. Um, insufficient capital, the wrong location, and the lack of planning, overexpansion, and then they have no website and no social media presence. And as they have their census data can help with the one, two, four, five, and six. And this is what I was talking about, the social media presence. These are e-commerce sales, um, basically from 2011 to 2020. And this is the percent of total quarterly retail sales. So you could see e-commerce sales account for upwards of almost 16% of um, totally quarterly retail sales. So it's very important that, you know, you want to get your share of that, of that social media presence, that website presence. And to show you the data that, that I want to show you, um, I set up a scenario here. Um, I'm saying that I'm starting, a. I could have picked any business, but I picked a landscaping business. And I'm saying we're currently looking in the central Ohio for to start a new landscaping business or just research landscaping. The first thing you can do is you can go to census.gov and you can look at, you can go and find a code and then NAICS lookup. So when you go into the, North, the NAICS lookup, you can type in the title, the keyword, I typed in landscaping, or you can type in the, the NAICS code itself. And it, this is just part of it, but it gives you everything involved in that industry. Um, and it tells you what it's comprised of, 
what exactly it is. Um, it'll give you cross references. There's all sorts of stuff that are, that is available when you do a NAICS search. So the first thing we have data-wise um, for that's available is um, count our county business patterns. County business patterns. The Census Bureau keeps a ledger of all single and multi-unit businesses across the United States. It's constantly updated. We do an economic census every five years of 4 million businesses, and that goes into updating county business patterns as well. And what county business patterns gives you, it gives you the number of establishments, the number of employees, and then it gives you payroll data. It doesn't give you revenue data. So if you look on the right-hand side, you can see I have, I just pulled a graphic because Earth Day was basically in late April. Um, you see that this is indicative of county business patterns. It gives you the number of establishments. There's 423 hydroelectric uh, establishments in the United States. They have 3,261 employees, and they have a payroll of $283 million. So what I did here was I took landscaping, and I got county business patterns data for the six counties basically in central Ohio. So for example, there are 59 landscaping businesses in Fairfield County. They have 1,017 employees and here's their payroll over $44 million. $44 million. And if you look here, you could look at, um, you know, Franklin by sheer size of Franklin County. It has the most landscaping business, the most employees, the highest payroll. So the point here is these are businesses with employees. Um, you can you can pull this and look and see, you know, if you're opening a business, expanding a business, you want to know, is that county, is that place already saturated with the business that I'm trying to open? Um, or that I'm wanting to expand. You can also go down to the zip code level. Here I just picked some zip codes, and this is county business patterns down to the zip code level. So for example, I can see that there are 13 landscaping businesses in 43062, which is Patascala. There's a lot of small ones with less than five employees, and there's some that have 10 to four that have 10 to 19 employees. So, you know, again, you can you can delve down into the zip code level to see what is already there if you're thinking of opening or expanding a business. Now, we also have what's called non-employer statistics. Now, county business patterns are for businesses with employees. Non-employer statistics are for sole proprietorships, businesses with no employees. They, they make up 75% of the businesses in the United States, but they account for less than 4% of the revenue. So as they have there, you want to use county business patterns and non-employer statistics together. So you see here, here's non-employer statistics for landscaping for those six counties. And what you get is the number of establishments, which is 240 in Fairfield. So there's basically 240 landscaping businesses that are a little more than a person driving around in their truck, for instance, their sole proprietorship. And they account for five, over $5 million in revenue. So you would use that along with the county business patterns to see the total number of landscaping businesses um, that are in um, any given county. One second. Now we also have the economic census, and I have there that it's quinquennial. Quinquennial means it's done every five years. It's done every year that has a seven that ends in a seven and ends in a two, and it's as an economic census of four million businesses nationwide. And what you get at the county level, you get the number of establishments, you get the receipts of revenue, and payroll, and then number of employees. It also gives you the non-employers, the number of non-employer establishments, their revenue, 
And you can also go down to the zip code level with the economic census. So here's an example of those. Well, I dropped Perry County, I think, one of the counties because it was a it it was the economic census, as you see, Hocking County has a lot of D's in it because they don't non-disclosure because there was only a limited amount of landscaping businesses in Hocking County. So it, it went to non-disclosure. Um, but what you see is, for example, Fairfield County, you see that they have a number of firms and establishments, which, which is the same. They have 54 landscaping businesses. They have 949 employees. They have revenue of over 82 million. And then I did these calculations on the right-hand side. The Census Business Builder will do many calculations for you. It already gives you those. I just wanted to show you um, some of the things that you'll see. Um, for instance, you can see receipts per establishment. That's indicative of kind of like source size. Receipts per employee, employees per establishment, again, if you're looking at that, you can look maybe and see like Fairfield County might have some, might have a few larger landscaping businesses because they have the highest employees per establishment and they also have the highest payroll per employee. And Pickway County has the highest receipts per employer, per employee. And you can go down to the zip code level with, with economic census as well. So here I just have two zip codes just to show you. Um, there are six landscaping businesses, for instance, in 44017, four operated the entire year. And you can see there's one there that's pretty sizable. It has a revenue of between 500,000 to 999,000. 999, um, and also, if you look in the other zip, 44130, you can see that there's two very pretty large landscaping businesses there, revenue wise. So, again, you've got county business patterns, non employer establishments, I mean, non employer statistics, and economic census, which you can combine the three of them and take a look at what is already there. How are they doing? And you could look at them over the years if you wanted to as well. Now, that was our economic data, and, I, and since we have the American Community Survey as well, and that's in Census Business Builder, um, it's basically it's an ongoing survey. It's sent to three and a half million addresses per year, so we send it out to like three two hundred and seventy five thousand a month. Um, we do visit group quarters, twenty thousand group quarters. We have, um, those are nursing homes, college dormitories, things like that, and. The American Community Survey gives you critical information that we previously collected on the decennial long form. So you can get this information, this data, basically down to your neighborhood level. It covers 35, over 35 topics, supports over 300 known federal government uses. And it's important to know that the data are released twice a year. They're released one, as one-year estimates and as five-year estimates. This is the content um, of the data topics that you can get data for from the American Community Survey. So, you know, for instance, if you look at the demographic characteristics, age, sex, race, um, we have any number of social characteristics. So, for example, if you wanted to know how many people were disabled um, in your city or town, or how many grandparents are caregivers for their grandchildren, what languages do people speak at home? And then we have any number of housing characteristics. These are just some. Um, how old are the homes? What's the homes? What are the value of the homes? Um, how many people own? How many people rent? And then we have any number of economic characteristics as well, such as income, what occupations, what industries do people work in, what's poverty like, how do people get to work, how long does it take them to get to work? Things like that. Here we have, you can use the American Community Survey for market research. So, for example, an automobile company wants to understand the different characteristics of communities around high-performing and low-performing dealerships. 
So they can look at the ACS and they can tell, are the residents of a different age, sex, or family size in these locations? Have changes to employment or earnings changed local household budgets? Are new residents part of a demographic that doesn't drive? Um, do residents speak a different language at home? You know, does the dealership need to need signs or products promoted in, in the other languages? Is there a rise in computer or internet um, providing opportunities for new ways to reach your customers? So on the right side, I have average family size by census tract for Fairfield County. That was just one of the things, one of the many, many things you could look at. This is per census tract. These are all the census tract. The darker green is where there's higher average family size. As I said, the ACS comes out in one year and five year estimates. We, we've got rid of the three year after 2013. So if you look, the one year estimate is more current and the five year estimate is more precise because there's more data going into the five year estimate. And so the one year estimates are for populations 65,000 or more and the five year are for all areas. So for example, if I was looking at Franklin, Franklin County and I wanted any kind of data for Franklin County, I can use the one year or the five year estimate because it's well over 65,000. So, you know, my choice would be, do I want to be more current or do I want to be more precise? And we do have the one-year supplemental estimates. Those are for 20,000 plus as well. So those, those kind of like coincided with us getting rid of the three-year estimates. And so we got the one-year supplemental. This shows you our geographic hierarchy. Um, and basically what's going on here is the smallest geography we have is, of course, the census block. The only data available at the census block is right, will be 20, right now it's 2010, but it will be the 2020 census data, which is just basic demographic data, population data. The American Community Survey is available at the block group and up. So if you think of like a block in your neighborhood, that's indicative of a census block. Um, if you put a, a group of those blocks together, like let's say like three or four of them, that would make up a block group. And then three or four block groups would make up a census tract. And a census tract would have an optimum of roughly 4,000 people. So I could get any kind of data I want from the American Community Survey, for example, for, for all zip codes in the United States, um, or all census tracts in Fairfield County. So here to show you um, how you can use the American Community Survey along with our economic data to make a more informed decision. I have the, what you saw before, the economic census data for Frank, for, for these five counties combined with some American Community Survey data. And this is for landscaping. So for instance, and I highlighted the most in yellow. So basically Franklin County has 263 uh, 265 landscaping businesses. They have $440 million in receipts. And then I've got receipts per establishment. And then if I'm opening a landscaping business, you know, maybe I want an upscale landscaping business. So I want to know where is the highest median household income? And that's in Fairfield County in this case, at $67,609. And then again, maybe I'm not interested in renters because I, I have a landscaping business. I only want to know where are the most owner-occupied housing units. Or maybe even I could have pulled the, the highest percentage of owner-occupied housing units. But in this case, based on sheer size, it's in Franklin County. And then again, if I have an upscale landscape business, I want to know, you know, where are the higher home values at? And you can see the highest home value there is at in Fairfield County at 185,300 median home value. 
And then finally, I pulled the um, consumer expenditures spent on household on lawn and per household on lawn and garden. You know, where are they spending the most on their lawn and garden? And you could see that Fairfield County spends an average of $495.52 on lawn and garden. So again, you could use the county business patterns and non-employer statistics, the economic census, and combine that with the American Community Survey data as well. And you can also use American Community Survey data for marketing. Um, now I'd like to kind of, I'd like to switch and show you um, the ex, the Census Business Builder. Just bear with me just for a second. So here we have um, census.gov, our website. And when you go to all our data tools are under Explore Data. And then you go to Data Tools and Apps. And the data tools will be in alphabetical order. There's like three pages of them. You can see since it's in alphabetical order, Census Business Bill is right here. And before I actually go into it, there are two there are two census business builders. The one, the small business edition, is basically county by county. You can go down to the industry level, um, and then we have what's called the regional analyst edition. That was made specifically for chambers of commerce. The big difference is this regional analyst edition. You. Um, Chambers of Commerce wanted to create their own, they weren't interested in just a county by itself um, or a zip code by itself. They wanted to create their own areas. So you can use the regional annex edition to create an area, for example, of 10 counties if you wanted to. And it'll give you the sum of all those, whatever data you're looking at, it'll give you the sum of those 10 counties. And it, this, the regional analyst edition goes down only to the sector level whereas the uh, small business goes down to the actual industry level. So that's the big difference between the two. I'm going to show you the small business edition. It takes a minute to come up sometimes. And what you see is, you'll see the, it's very simple to use. Um, you'll see these six businesses here, these six industry um, groups. And those are the most, those are the most commonly opened businesses in the United States. And each one has basically nine industries underneath it. So you could either go through and find what industry you want, or you can simply type in the title or the, the NAICS, some kind of or a keyword down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue with the landscaping just to show you. So I'm gonna go click on personal services and then landscaping. Right away, it tells you there are 101,567 landscaping businesses in the United States. Next thing you do is step two is put your location. I'm just going to type in Fairfield. You could type in a city, um, a town, a county. So I'm going to choose Fairfield County, Ohio. And when you do that, you see that they go to map and the career report become available. Um, I would suggest go to map first, just because you can create a report anytime. So you go to map first to know what you're looking at. So when you click go to map, um, it immediately zooms in the, into Fairfield County and gives you one statistic. One statistic that you see there, the 154, 457,000 uh, people in Fairfield County. Let me zoom out.
So you can see that the blue is where there's higher populations. If you look at the key, yellow is the second most, and then orange. And basically, you could click around on the map if you wanted to see. You could see how it changes. Perry County has 36,022 population. On the bottom here, we have the dashboard. You can create a report at any time, which I'll show you, but um, it gives you some data. It gives you the, right now we're on population. That's the default variable. I can change to whatever variable I want, but it defaults to population. And it gives you some data here as well. You can see there's median household income for Fairfield. Here's percent high school degree or higher at 92.6, home ownership rate, and there's 53 landscaping businesses in um, Fairfield, Fairfield County. And what the, the star would make that your map variable. So if I wanted to see median household income on the map, I could just click on a star. The pencil will change that variable. You can change that to whatever you want, you, what you want to see here, these four. So I could change that to, let's say, owners or renters if I wanted to, very simply. Um, now, across the top, you have your industry, which right now we're on landscaping. I could easily change the industry. You can change your location. You could change your location by here, or if you wanted to look at cities or towns or zip codes or census tracts, you just simply click on the, any one of those. And then we have our map variables. Um, right now we're on total population. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what those are. Um, I'm going to open it up. So you have your, right now we're on customers. That's the ACS, the American Community Survey data. So customers are broken down by demographic, socioeconomic, and housing. Right now we're on demographic. You can see what the demographic looks like. Um, you have the percent male, female, different age groups, then you different races, then Hispanic origin. Um, social economic, you have income, high school degree, household size, poverty, employed, disabled, health, health, health coverage, how long does it take people to get to work, how many vehicles do they have, veterans, foreign born, what languages do people speak at home. And then we have any number of housing characteristics as well. You could see all the different owner, renter, home ownership rate percent with the internet subscription, rent, when were the homes built. So that's all the ACS data that, that you can choose to see on the map. Then if you go to businesses annual, that's what I showed you, the county business patterns, the non-employer statistics, the, the economic census data. So right now we're on employers. That's basically, um, the county business pattern. So you can get the number of establishments, the total employ, uh, total annual payroll, the revenue of, you know, the revenue of landscaping businesses in this, in this example, for instance. And then we have the ag, and ag is only if I was on an ag industry, which I'm not, so that's why they're lined out. And then you have your non-employers. Um, you know, the number of non-employer landscaping businesses, their revenue, and the revenue, you know, maybe you'd want to look at the revenue per non-employer firm. Where are they getting the most bang for their buck? And then what I really like are these key ratios. This are the ra these are the ratios that I showed you my calculations, my th three or four calculations. Now, here's a whole bunch. You know, you'd want to know maybe the average employment, to see what sizes there are of those businesses. Um, what's the average revenue that could be expected? Um, revenue per employee, population per employer. I'd wanna know that, you know, where, where you know, maybe that it's already saturated with, with the business that I'm trying to open or expand. 
And then you've got a total number of employers and non-employers and their total revenue as well. And then you've got international trade, and that's only available for, um, oops, I went off it. Um, they're individual for countries, so that's why they're lined out. And then we've got this businesses quarterly. That's from the the, um, the um, BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and that's from the cens uh, the quarterly census of employment and wages. So they put that data in here as well. And it's similar to county business patterns <clears throat> that you saw, but it, it gives you the number of establishments and then it gives you employment per quarter and then it gives you the wages. So you you know, maybe you'd want to know the wages of, in this case, of the landscaping, the landscaping industry. And then you've got the change in that from month to month a month, a, a quarter of a month in one year and a month in the next year. Um, and then you've got the percent change from year to year, basically. And then you've got what's called the location quotient. Um, the location quotient is basically it compares, um, the, in this case, the number of establishments um, in a particular area to the U.S. as a whole. So in this case, it would compare, let's say, Fairfield to the United States in employment, in wages, in weekly wages. And then you've got workforce, which basically gives, it, it's coming from the, um, the Census Bureau. It comes from um, quarterly workforce indicators, which we have, which we do. And this basically it's employment. These are available on the sector through four, the four digit NAICS. So that's why they're lined out. Um, but it gives you the employment separations, job change, average monthly earnings. And then we have building permits. Building permits basically show you, if you look at those, they're gonna show you how they're indicative of future growth. So if you wanna look at an area and see you know, is it a growing area? Look at the number of building permits they've taken out over the, you know, over the past year. And then we have consumer ex consumer spending. That is, we've got all the ESRI data. Um, it's what people spend on, you know, basically anything. So here, example, for example, here is alcoholic beverages. So if you were open on a restaurant or anything like that, uh, a bar, um, maybe you'd want to know, you know, how much they're spending on alcohol beverages consumed at home, or not, maybe not at home, but um, or to how much your restaurant, how much people spend on dining out for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. And then finally, you can also put your own variables in there. Um, and it gives you a sample of how to do it. I really have never done it, but it's it's pretty straightforward. Use uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and you can upload your your own variables in there, and you can see your own variables on the map. So what I'm going to do is just to show you, I'm going to show, I'm going to go on customers, and let's say I was interested in median household income. Maybe, you know, like I said before, I'm an upscale landscaping business. I want to know, you know, where are the higher median household incomes? And so right away I could see the blue, Fairfield, um, Licking, Pickaway, where the median household incomes are the highest. Um, and let's say I can also, and right now they this is fairly new, they gave you the choice it's bivariate analysis, so you can choose a second map variable. And they're actually looking at multivariate analysis as well, a mapping feature. Um, but right now it's it's just two variables. So let's say I wanted a second variable. And let's say, um, since I'm, I'm looking at landscaping, maybe I wanna know um, where, where are the areas where they spend the most on, on, house, on house and garden? I'm in lawn and garden. 
So I'll make that my second variable. And what it's going to do, you'll see in a second, it, it'll draw, it'll make these dot, these balls on each of the counties. And you can see the bigger ones are where they're spending higher amounts <clears throat> on their lawn and garden. And you can look at your map key and you can see it gives you, now it shows you the second variable as well. So basically I could look at here, if I was looking at landscaping, I could see, okay, um, for instance, Fairfield is, is sort of okay, it's not bad, but and if you look at like Delaware is even better, high, probably a higher median household income and a higher amount spent on lawn and garden, and even over here as well. So if we click on one of these counties, let me see what I did. Click on. I clicked, well, I'm still in Fairfield. Um, let me click on Delaware. So now you can see Delaware has 106,000, almost 107,000 in median household income, and they spend a lot, 731 on lawn and garden. Um, okay, let me do another thing here. Now, what I'm going to do now is to show you, I'm going to click on zip code. The map's going to get kind of crazy because it has the two variables selected on it. You might have to zoom in a lot to see it, but um, okay. Um, now we're looking at the zip codes, and again, we're still looking at median household income, and we're looking at consumer expenditures on lawn and garden per zip code. But like I said, you'd have to zoom in a number of times to see, you know, which circle belongs in which zip code. But that's, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to turn that off. I just wanted to show you another feature of this. So now you can see the median household incomes per zip code. The highest are in blue. And another thing you can do with this is you could set a filter. You can set up the five filters. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new filter and I'm going to set, since I'm on, you don't have to be on the map variable itself. It works, it works independent of, of, of the map variable. Um, if I was looking at population, for example, I can make my filter median household income. It doesn't matter, but right now I happen to be looking at median household income. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter on median household income. And what's happening now is now I could, I could use the slider, which is kind of hard to, to get it right. I prefer to check this box for enter values manually. So I'll do that. And let's say I want, um, I don't want to know only where 60,000 and more. But what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to gray out those zip codes that don't meet that criteria. The the ones you see are ones the zip codes that have sixty thousand or more in median household income. So again, you know maybe I want to get down to the zip code level. Where are you know where are the higher incomes per zip code? And then let's say. Um, just to show you another filter, I could go ahead and put, um, so in my case, if I'm looking at landscaping, you know, maybe I want to look at those zip codes where the home ownership rate is the most. And let's say I want to put, um, we'll say, uh, I don't know what's going on with this one, eight. Okay, good. I'm going to go to 80, 80%. So now I have two filters, median household income and home ownership rate. Home ownership rate of 80% or more. Now I further, now look what's on my map. 
only the, the median household incomes that are 60,000 or more and home ownership rate of 80% or more. And as I said, you could set up the five filters. So if you wanted to keep setting filters up to five, you, you know, you're, you're, that'd be fine. So that, that's the filters. And you can, on the right-hand side here, you can download this map data as Excel or CSV. You can change the reference layers on the map. Um, if you wanted to add a new layer from shapefiles and different things like that. You can also change the base map, the look of it. And you can also change the transparency of it. Um, and I forgot to tell you down here on the on the map key, you can change the color scheme as well. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go back to counties. And then I'm going to I'm going to delete these filters. So one last example I wanted to show you um so if I wanted to see, like, if I was really looking at, like, landscaping, one of the things I'd really want to look at is um, I would want to look at, like I said, these key ratios are very good, I think. But um, let's see. I would like to look at population per employer. And then maybe I'd want to look at the... Um, average revenue per employer. So you can see the population per employer, the blue is the best, uh, followed by the yellow. So I can see, for instance, um, it's pretty good in, in um, Franklin County, as you can see, and it, it has a, um, um, the revenue per employee is is also pretty good. It's roughly in that 775 to 1,080. So, and you could scroll on the, scroll around the map down here. It looks good. I'm going to see what that. That's chill copy. Um, you can see that. The one I just clicked on was Ross County. They have 5,137 population per per landscaping business, and the average revenue per landscaping business is um, over 2.1 million. So, I mean, that that's just, I just wanted to show you that is one of the things, of the many things that I'd want to look at, um, for instance, if I was looking to expand or open a business. Now, finally, I just want to show you um, one last thing, and that's the reports. So let me go, and I'm going to click on Fairfield County. And then down on the dashboard, you see create a report. And it takes it a second to create a report. So you can see, now here's the report, the table of contents, um, potential customers. Potential customer is all the ACS data that I talked about. So you can see there's the ages, the sex, age, race. And then we've got You've got the social economic characteristics as well for Fairfield. You can see the, the bachelor's degree, household size, employed, disabled, health insurance, how long does it take them to get to work, how many vehicles people have, 
how did they get to work and different things like that. And then your housing characteristics. And then you've got your business summary for landscaping in this case. And this is, you could see that there's 53 landscaping businesses, their average employment, the sizes of those landscaping businesses. Um, and then it gives you the, those calculations like population per employer, uh, employment of employers, payroll, And then the revenue, business revenue, you can see the like average revenue per landscaping businesses, uh, um, total revenue. And then you've got your non-employer data as well. And then you've got your business quarterly. That's coming from the um, the quarterly census of employment and wages. So you can get, you know, what's the employment like? How has employment changed? What's the wage, what are the wages like for the industry? Um, different things like that. And finally, you've got, well, here's your building permit taken out. So like I said, that's indicative of future growth. So maybe you'd want to look at it, a specific area and see, you know, what are they building? Are they growing? You know, how many building permits do they take out and what size? And then you've got your, finally, you've got your consumer spending. So basically, this is all that ESRI data um, that we, you know, we've got, we combined with them and they gave us their data. And so you could see what, basically what people spend on almost anything. So in my case, like I said, I'd want to know, you know, how much do they spend on home and garden? you know, if I was doing landscaping. And I think that's it. Um, yeah, does anybody have any, are there any questions? Wow, Tim, that was such, oh, I mean, there was a comment in the chat that this, you know, we had no idea that there was this much data available, and it's so true. I mean, there's so much data available that you can tap into and really dig into and do the research for your community, um, the surrounding area. So, I mean, who has questions? Does anybody have questions for, for Tim? Hi, this is Sabrina. I had a quick question, Tim. Um, uh -huh. Can you tell me, is there a way to search maybe just by like a, a 20 mile radius of a particular location or does it all have to be um, boiled down to different counties and zip codes? Um, that's a good question. Um, we don't, we, we don't have, um, we don't have, um, we don't specifically have that Census Bureau. Um, I've seen similar, I've seen different, um, I want to say different census affiliates, different, and I have to look for it, but you can create a, you can drop a point and, um, and, you know, you could find data on a, a circle with a certain radius, um, but we don't specifically have, we do have one tool that will show you the number of workers, um, what you know what basically the number of jobs within that area and what their what their income basically is um, different things like that um, that's you can use that in a, on it's a tool called on the map where you could drop a point and create a circle of any radius and find out you know basically the number of jobs and and their race the racial breakdown um, and different demographics about those people within a, within that area but you know like this we used to have american fact finder our old data tool that we we um decommissioned and that you used to be able to do that something similar you used to be able to drop a point and make a, a circle of any radius and find out any kind of acs data that was within that circle um that functionality is not I, i'm assuming at some point it will be available in data.census.gov our new data tool but right now it's not. But that's, yeah, I did like that feature. The one drawback of that was when you draw that circle, 
um, you tell it you want a circle of, of basically one mile, um, it the line of the circle where it's going to pull any if it touches a county, for example, it's going to pull the whole county. If you know it, if it touches only a tiny fraction of that county, it's going to pull the whole county. So that was one drawback of it. But still, I like that data tool that we did have. Um, but I'm assuming we, that we will put it at some point, get it back. Great question. Thank you, Sabrina. Anyone else who has questions for Tim? And um, before you say, I, you know, the, the, the census business builder, you know, not only for, I frequently use it myself just for research purposes. I mean, it, it you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be for, for opening a business, researching a business. I mean, that is basically one of its primary functions, but it also gives you all the ACS data on, on a map that's clearly visible. You can set five filters. A lot of grant people like it, you know, they like to, to see, they like to use the filters to see what, you know, what counties, what's available in what counties, the data for specific counties um, when they're writing their grants. Absolutely. Well, I um, mean, I think, go ahead. Yeah, just, um, can you clarify for me um, back um, earlier in your presentation, um, you'd pulled up the economic census for Hawking County and it had um, D listed and you'd mentioned that that was non-disclosure due yeah. to limited numbers. Can you kind of uh, elaborate a little more on why it wouldn't list that or? Well, I mean, cause it was a limited amount of hockey of, of let's say, um, and it's hard to know because what they're doing is they're up and it's, it, they're applying um, it seems like even that the new economic census that'll come out in 2022, there'll probably be even a little bit more of, of non-disclosure. Um, I would say, you know, maybe there was only a limited number of, of landscaping um, in Hocking County. So they have a certain cutoff where they won't disclose, um, they won't disclose or, you know, they don't want people to know um, exactly what business they're talking about. If there's only like two or three or four. Um, okay. So, because Pickaway County, yeah. I mean, it's got 14. So I would assume that maybe it's 10 or less. Yeah. There's, there's not really a, it's hard to know that. I mean, I'm sure it may be it's somewhere on the economic census website. Um, what, what they do as far as non-disclosure, but it's, you know, for instance, if I go and I do West Virginia sometimes, and it, it gets kind of frustrating um, because it's not very industry oriented. There's not a lot of industry going on there. So I had to be very careful of what industry I pick because, you know, this, if I pick landscaping, for instance, in five or six counties, it might be full of D's with non-disclosure if I was in West Virginia. Um, it's, it's just hard to know what their actual cutoff is. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh-huh. All right, anyone Anything else? Awesome, well, I did record this and um, if anybody would like you know, the recording, we can certainly send that out. And also um, Tim's information, um, if you need that, it was at the end of the slide, but I can also send you um, his contact information if you need it. So there it is, um, you can certainly screenshot that. And just wanna say thank you for joining us this morning. This was um, so informational and I know I'm excited to kind of dig into it and see what we've got here in, in um, Pickerington and surrounding areas. So um, thank you so much, Tim. This was fantastic. And we'll certainly uh, probably reach back out to you again to, to, you know, to do this another time because I think it was just you oh, know, yeah. great information. So yeah, anytime. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you all so much. Have a fabulous Tuesday and uh, we'll talk to everyone very soon. Thank you. Thank you guys.